Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody today? Good. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, if you would please turn off your phones, that would be great. Is am I am I on? No. Mm -hmm. No. 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 Now I am. Okay. <laughs> um, so if you turn off your phones or mute them, that'd be great. And uh, it looks like we have a, a wonderful musician, Rick, today with us. And our special guest musician will be Joy, um, bringing us our wonderful music. And it looks like um, Reverend Melanie will be speaking. Thank you. <laughs> Not unless you just want to hang out in front. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It feels so great to be right here in front of you. It's been a couple of months, so I've been missing you. Um, welcome to all those who are joining us from the internet um, and from online. We are so glad you are here. And those of you that are here, it is interesting when you look around, you see everybody smile with their eyes. So while I only see your eyes, I think they look great. Thank you for being here. I want to talk to you first thing this morning about um, Psalms 141. Listen and see what you think. I call upon you, O Lord, come quickly to me. Give ear to my voice when I call you. <clears throat> let my prayer be counted as incense before you. And let the lifting of my hands be as an evening sacrifice. I want to talk to that part about lifting of my hand. I want to talk about it a little bit later. First thing I want you to do, though, this morning is to lift your hand. See how it feels. How does it feel? <laughs> yeah, I think it feels good. I don't know about you. I know a lot of times the children would raise their hands to get attention. but So are we raising our hands to get God's attention sometimes? The scripture says, I'm, I'm going to call on you. So when I do call on you, please hear me. Do you call on God quite often? Yeah, every now and then I catch myself saying, Oh God, oh God. Do you do that? Naturally my head goes up. I want to see when you raise your hands if your head goes up. See if it goes up and then it stays straight. Just try it out. Uh, it can't stay straight. But it does feel good. So does lifting your hands kind of lift your heart? Yes, think about that as we hear today's message, and we're going to revisit about lifting our hands. I'm going to call upon you, O Lord. I want you to come to me quickly. I'm putting this on my own paraphrasing. God, give ear to my voice when I call you. Let my prayer be counted as incense before you, and the lifting up of my hands as an evening sacrifice. Let's think about that today, the lifting up of our hands. Would you join me now with the statement of being? God is all, both invisible and visible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. I am the individualized expression of God. And I am ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. Joy will be joining us today via the internet. are one by one everyone comes to remember we're healing the world one heart at a time and I think we have cause to celebrate but there's still a lot of work to do the country is really divided the election was close so 
a lot of people are still feeling neglected and angry and scared, and I think we just need to keep putting out that love and learning how to listen. So you can uh, enjoy and reflect on that and be happy. Hmm. One by one, everyone comes to remember we're healing the world one heart at a time. One by one, everyone comes to remember we're healing the world one heart at a time. One by one. Everyone comes to remember where he
definitely had to put my mask on so I could kind of see a little more. It's that time, so let's get comfortable and quiet. It's time for us to lay down all of those false beliefs that we have. And any notion or idea that we are not one, just let it go. Feel everything that separates us just kind of fade away. Yes, my friends, know that we are one right now. <coughs> know that you are one with our Father. Know that what is born of Spirit is Spirit. Take in a deep breath and know right now That you, as the child of God, has the nature of God within you. Spirit. He gets the spirit. <clears throat> now, my friends, that because you are spirit, That you have perfect life because our God has perfect life. Isn't it wonderful to know? I'm going to call you today in our quiet meditation time to, to know the perfect wisdom that you are and that you To know that but you have perfect love, and you are perfect love, because our God is perfect love. I invite you today to acknowledge this one source that we have. Know that we are all equally loved and cared for. And as we said this morning in our statement of being, I am one with this ever-perfect substance, this ever-perfect God. Now in your heart, I ask you to take some deep breaths and let your heart reach out. Feel our oneness together. Take this quiet time, about 90 seconds. Know that our Bible says that his truth will endure us to all generations. And as our scripture said this morning, to hear when you call. Let your heart call. Enjoy this quiet minute. It will be delightful.
come unto me, says, <clears throat> come unto me. I will hear you. And I will give you rest. I'm going to give you rest from all your misbeliefs. I'm going to give you rest from all those things that irk you. I'm going to give you rest from the sorrows that you carry. Lay them down, says the Lord. I will give you rest. <clears throat> I'll give you rest from the belief that we are not one. I hope that in a few moments you gave a reach out to that great center within you. Where you know truth dwells. And is the light unto your feet. In deepest peace, let us pray together the way that we believe Jesus prayed. In the translation from the Nora Foundation, in Aramaic, the, the language that Jesus spoke on this earth, our Father who is everywhere, your name is sacred, your kingdom has come, your will is throughout the earth, even as it is throughout the universe. You give us our needful bread from day to day, and you forgive us our offenses, even as we forgive our offenders. And you let us not into materialism, but you separate us from hell. Because yours are the kingdom, the power, and the song and praise from all ages, throughout all ages, sealed in the truth. So faith, trust, and truth. How are you doing? I want to share with you um, a little bit of a song that I heard many, many, many years ago. Now, I'm not going to sing it. Aren't you grateful? <laughs> I'm not going to sing it for you, but I'm going to interpret some of it for you. I was going to a conference. Uh, it was called the Extraordinary Woman Conference. Um, I found it quite interesting, I enjoyed it the first few times that I went, to have this big Coliseum area, Civic Center, whatever it may be, with all these women and talking about, you know, your walk with God, your Jesus journey, whatever you would like to call that. And we had this fellow sing, his name was Charles Billingsley. And I want you to keep this in mind because you might want to look it up on YouTube later and hear the song yourself, straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Charles Billingsley writes many nice songs, and he's a worship leader. And he goes around to several churches at times. But he was there at our E-Women conference, an extraordinary women conference. And he sang this one song that has stuck with me, and it comes back to me when I need some help. I'm calling this talk today, Trust Your Perfect Plan. Now, I don't want to talk about trust. I know a lot of us have trust issues. I'm going to count on the fact that you can trust God and that you're working on it if you're not there yet. The song starts out by saying, In everything I will give thanks to you, and I'll just trust your perfect plan. What a powerful powerful statement. Now, I'm not going to go into the troubles that I'm going through. They're physical, and that's why I'm sitting down today. And I appreciate Jan and others who made accommodations for me. Thank you. But I've been going through this ordeal. And in my ordeal, I found myself saying some of these things right from this song. Right after the part about I'm going to trust your perfect plan, Charles Billingsley says or sings, when I don't know what to do, when I don't know what to say, when I don't know where to go, 
And when I just don't know what to think. And he gives some wonderful suggestions. And those are the ones we're going to talk about today. I found them so powerful for me that they help me tremendously. And sometimes it takes a while before I think of it again. It's a memory, and I'm getting up there in my years. So I, I sometimes <laughs> have a memory gap. He says these four things, and then I'm going to talk about them. And I'm going to have you sometimes during this uh, next 20 minutes to say them with me because I believe they're going to bring to you a tremendous effect that you can use daily. Daily. But you know for something to be a habit, you know how many times you have to do it? Eleven. Some people say eleven and I've also heard, no, I'm stubborn, I need twenty-one times to do it. But you need to do it daily to make it a habit. Here's how the song goes. When I don't know what to do, I lift my hands. Oh, we talked about that this morning. When I don't know what to say, I'll speak your praise. When I don't know where to go, I run to your throne. And when I don't know what to think, I'm going to stand on your truth. When I don't know what to do. I want you to look this song up today, so I'll tell you his name later again. So basically, it's about getting back to basics, is it not? So we talked a little bit this morning about I'll raise my hands. Now when you're troubled, where are you usually physically in location? You might be in your car thinking about your trouble. You might be on your couch or sofa. That's where I was. You might be in your kitchen, in your garden, in your yard. And suddenly that thought comes to you, oh, God, I don't know what to do. Now you know what to do, don't you? You raise your hand. We talked about how that feels good. Do we think God is up there that you're reaching up to God? No. We don't think that. But it does open up something, doesn't it? I'm going to ask you one more time, just to raise your hand. And do you not feel an opening up from your chest, from your waist, your tummy? It feels like you're opening up. I think that in a lot of places, it feels like when I'm raising my hands, I'm not giving up in defeat. That would be more like this. No. It's more of a sign of a victory. It's a positive physical action. And it feels good. Many times when I raise my hands, People will look at me like, oh, what is she doing again? Right? <laughs> and I don't care. Have you ever been in your car and raised your hands or had a prayer or you've done something and the people beside you are just like, oh, kind of trying to see what you're doing? I don't care. I used to sing praise songs really loudly in my car <laughs> with the windows up. And I got a lot of looks. And I'll tell you, I don't care. I was being some happy praise time inside of me, and I loved it. Listen to Psalm 141. Verse 1. I call to you, Lord, come quickly to me. Hear me when you call. When I call. Hear me when I call. Thank you. May my prayer be set before you like incense, and may the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. Now when I looked up about the evening sacrifice, what I found out was that it's usually the one that was around 3 o'clock. That was what they considered evening. They gave the sacrifice of the perfect lamb, the perfect 
sample the animal, and also some grain. If I'm not mistaken, those sacrifices fed the workers in the church, the priests that were there in the temple. And that evening sacrifice lasted hours through the afternoon, the evening, the night, and into the morning until it's time for the morning sacrifice. So let's think of that. How do we compare raising our hands to the evening sacrifice? Let it be like the evening sacrifice. What I think it means is that lifting your hands is going to last you for a while. Just do it. Do it with abandonment. <clears throat> no matter where you are. And when you just don't know what to do, raise your hands. It feels good. It opens you up to new thought. And it stays with you like the evening sacrifice. So when I don't know what to do, you say the part. I'll, I'll lift my hands or raise my hands. Yes. I like the last part of this verse that I was reading from Psalm 141. Right after that part of raising your hands, like make it like the evening sacrifice, here's what it says. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep a watch over the door of my lips. I love that, and let that stay with you, because when you lift your hands, just shut your mouth. <laughs> right? Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep me from complaining. Help me not to say, Oh, God, everything is horrible. It's terrible. I'm miserable. Got to watch those I statements, right? So remember this. When I don't know what to do, I'm going to raise my hands. I'm going to lift them up. And I'm going to ask God to keep a guard over my mouth. God knows. But what we say is important. Sometimes we should just be quiet. <laughs> now let's go to the next one. When I don't know what to say. We just talked about that. Well, hopefully you're going to keep this guard over your mouth. And what's going to come out is going to be praise. The song says, when I don't know what to say, I'll speak your praise. Thanks, God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your guidance. Psalm 104, verse 33 says, I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Think about for a while making your whole life a praise. It can be done. And I'm going to say again, it feels good. See, my advice is good for your mind, but it's also feeling good. Also, know what you're not doing when you're singing God's praise. You're not whining about your situation. You are certainly not complaining. When you're singing God's praise and speaking God's praise, you are not spewing your bad stuff. Now, you don't have to raise your hand. But how many of you say a cuss word now and then? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we like them. I've heard people say, I like that cuss word. It's my favorite one. But when you really are in a situation and you need God's help, Charles wrote, the words, when I don't know what to say, I'll sing your praise. I'll speak it. <clears throat> I found myself a few times this past week feeling that guard on my mouth being away, slipping away. And I was able to say, God, but what came after it had to be a praise, and I caught myself. So if you're thinking about it, you'll catch yourself. 
I would say, God, boo, bless America. <laughs> God bless us all. I'd speak all kind of praise, and I could find many of them from things I've learned right here in this church. Yes, God set this guard over my mouth. Keep a watch over the door of my lips, and I will sing your praise. If you're me, just speak. Sing, you might not be the best thing. I don't know. I sing at home. Nobody hears. So let's see. When I don't know what to do, you, I'll your turn. My hands. I'll lift my hands. And when I don't know what to say, I'm going to speak your praise. Sounds like a pretty good plan so far. So let's go to the next one. When I don't know where to go. The song says, when I don't know where to go, I'll run to your throne. So let's talk about the throne room for a minute. What do we know about our throne room? <coughs> Psalm 1, I'm sorry, it's 11.4 says, the Lord is in his holy temple. We know that, right? That we are the holy temple. And when the Lord is in the holy temple, he is on his heavenly throne. So what do we usually think about who is on the throne? Maybe a king. I like to think of it as the one in charge. So when I think about my throne room, I think about the Lord in my temple. Because we know our body is a temple. And when I know that, I believe that God is in control. I'm going to run to your throne. Throne is in the temple. It's within you. That's our throne room. <clears throat> run to God who is in the holy temple. And this gives us a chance to remember right then who you are. I've raised my hands because I didn't know what to do. God, I'm singing or speaking your praise all the days of my life. And because I don't know where to go right now, I'm going to run within. I'm going to my temple. I'm going to go inside and consult the one on the throne. The one in charge. I'm going to trust my God. I'm going to say one more time to be careful of your I statements. It still is taking me some time. And I am appreciative that I have friends and people around me, my church family, who will remind me when I'm saying an I statement that is not good for me. I found myself walking in the door today and I said an I statement that I wanted to take back right away. I said, I am slow. I'm using that walker. I am slow. Oh, I have this horribly huge swollen foot. And then even though my friends around didn't hear me, I caught myself right away. Thank you, God. And I went right to saying more positive things. Child of the living God. So I said, I'm child of the living God. And I'm moving right along. <laughs> See why I'm saying. <laughs> be careful because I know a lot of times in your situation, <clears throat> you might be saying, I'm miserable, I'm mad, I'm lonely. And when you say those I statements, you're claiming that. So I'm asking you, don't do that. Don't claim that. If you have to, go back to praise if your mouth is not being guarded very well. Right? Change it right away. Right? Emmett Fox always said that you look the other way. Meaning, if you're looking at something that you don't understand in despair, you turn to what is good, you pivot. Good advice, we pivot. 
turn within and make an affirmative statement. And I'm going to say, then you can watch the miracle happen. Your face will change. You will smile. You will know that I am perfect. You can say this about yourself. I am perfect no matter the circumstance around me. No matter what, I'm still perfect. God is good, and as we say in the sound, all the, all the time. Thank you. And there's more to that. All the time, God is, God is good. And if you just say those kinds of affirmative statements, it will bring upon a miracle for you. So when I don't know what to do, I'll lift my hands. When I don't know what to say, I'll speak your praise. When I don't know where to go, I'll run to your throne. And now when I don't know what to think, mm, when I don't know what to think, his song says, I'll stand on your truth. Do you know the truth? The truth that is everlasting, that is changeless about you, about me, about each individual expression of God? Now here's the important part of knowing the truth. It's that you've got to know it about someone else too, not just yourself, right? <clears throat> you've got to know it about someone else too. Divine science teaches us the fundamental principle, our basic truth. My God is omnipresent. God is in all through all, and is all. I'll say that one more time. God is in all. God is through all. God is all. Hmm. You have to stand on that truth. This is my little Divine Science Principle and Practice book. Uh, as you can see, I've got it marked. If you don't have one, I'm going to say, please get one. I want to read about truth. God the good is omnipresent. Notice it says God the good. God omnipotent and omnipresent means that God is everywhere present. That means my good is ever-present. The knowledge that God is all in all completely eliminates all fear. A mind centered upon good has no false beliefs. Since God is infinite, there is no place for anything contrary to God. All is good. This is the part I have to keep reminding myself, that since God is infinite, there is no place for anything that is contrary to God. So if you have a thought that's contrary to God, I think it's okay to call it out. I think it's okay to say right after you say that thing, uh, or do that thing that's not contrary, that is contrary to God, you say, oh, I've, I've just said something that's contrary to God into my belief. Let me fix that. Let me restate. It's okay. People will appreciate it, I believe. <clears throat> so you see, these four things, as we've talked about them, are really and truly a lifestyle. It's a way of living. It's not something you want to do once. It's not something you want to try and forget. You want to make it a lifestyle. A lifestyle based on a complete trust and confidence in God. It's a way of living. It's a way of living. Now, this is a little book that I'm reading with, we're reading with Marita, and Nancy had done a class on the mysteries a while back, and it's always good to read them again. This is something 
something that hopefully will clear up a mystery for you. Take a listen. In divine science, we never hold anyone else responsible for the things that come to us. We hold ourselves responsible for meeting the experiences of the day with power and of living our own lives divinely. We work within ourselves. Each experience gives us opportunity for service. It doesn't say some, it says each. Each experience is going to give us an opportunity for service. It's not what the experience is doing to me. Ah. Whatever the experience or circumstance is, what your mind should quickly go to is what I learn from the experience and what is good about it. And how can I use it for service? Very good book. It's all about my way of life. So let's do a quick repeat, just because I want you to remember these steps. <clears throat> when I don't know what to do, I'll lift my hands. When I don't know what to say, I'll sing your praise. You can speak, I'll speak your praise. When I don't know um, where to go, I'll run inside to your throne, to the one in charge. And when I don't know what to... Oh, did I forget? Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. But I don't. I did forget. I don't. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and I don't know what to think. I'll stand on your truth. Mm. Everything we know about God and everything that we know about even the scriptures and everything we know about our divine science experience tells us that God is in control. And that those things work it out. That all is good. And all means all. And that's what all means. All is good. Even though we perceive it as something else. Hmm. I hope you will look up Charles Billingsley on YouTube. Listen to his song, When I Don't Know What to Do, is what it's called. And um, usually, uh, when you see him singing, he'll be leading others in a praise time. You will enjoy it. I hope you'll use this song with these steps <clears throat> to live your life. Make it good. We're going to hear some beautiful music, I think, from Joy again. I'm going to put on my mask in case I want to... Sing along. Even though they told us not to sing. I can't help it. This is a song called Walk Your Walk oh. by My Muse. I like it. And they're an amazing duo, songwriter, singer duo. You should check them out. My Muse, M A M U S E. And this is all about celebrating your unique self because we now are starting to live in a world where we don't have to be afraid or as afraid to be ourselves. So isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yay! So enjoy. Oh, we are here, we are free. 
afraid. Don't you worry, just be what you're gonna be. Walk your walk, sing your song. It's your life, you belong. We are here, we are free. Don't you worry, just be what you're gonna be. Joyfully accept the gifts of life 
and give freely of the special gift that I am. Through me, God omnipresent, blesses and multiplies this gift for all. Thank you, dear God. Your donations are always welcome. We appreciate all that you do. It helps us keep things rolling. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay, a few announcements. Can y'all hear me? Okay. okay. For some reason, it didn't sound like it was on. Um, thank you for that message this morning. Uh, my guardian, I think, and he won't lock on it this week, thank God. So, <laughs> I probably will be that for, away for a while. But uh, anyhow, um, thank goodness for that. The flowers today are beautiful, as usual, and they're sponsored by Anne for Laurel's birthday. Happy birthday, Laurel. Oh, birthday, Laurel. Oh, really? uh, before I forget, we, we talked about the blessing of the gifts. The money basket is over here for people. We don't pass it anymore because of the, the virus. So the money basket's over here. Also the prayer basket. There's plenty of prayer requests in there. So please take one or two or a handful because we have prayer requests coming in all the time. And lots of people right here in our own church need lots of prayer. So please feel free to take those as you exit to the door or to go back to get some uh, snacks and coffee. And uh, also while you're back there, visit our Christmas store and maybe buy some Christmas ornaments or something from our store. That's one of our, uh, basically been our only fundraiser this year is the store. And we probably by this time raised over $1,000 on it. So anyhow, uh, which is good for only a few people being here. So that's great. And thank you, Martha, for always taking care of it. She just uh, always finds things and uh, people bring them in, and she's always switching it out, so thank you for doing that. Uh, let's see, last year, last last week we talked about, we got some new bumper stickers, and uh, you want to hold them up again? Maybe I like that. Well, it's not a bumper sticker for one thing. That's a window sticker. It's a, yeah, it's a claim. Yeah. And uh, anyhow, uh, we're selling them for $5 a right. piece uh, to go on our windows, and this time it has our... Uh, a website on there and our name where as the old bumper stickers did not have that. So for five dollars a piece and that is a fundraiser because somebody purchased them for us and so the money will be going for our uh, repairs for the church. Uh, let's see, I wrote well, down that guy's name so I didn't try not to announce that. So uh, let's say November the 28th which is a Saturday, uh, the Saturday after Thanksgiving we're going to be decorating the uh, church made so you can be here since you're usually working so um, anyhow we're going to it'll probably be around 10 o'clock but uh, I know we have to cut back on a lot of things that we do but we are going to decorate the, the church for Christmas and continue on doing some of the things that you know are traditional but a lot of the things like our dinners and parties and all that will, will not be happening this year but we'll try to do some other things along the way to keep people happy. Uh, our outre outreach for uh, Christmas we talked about this a little bit <clears throat> excuse me we're doing a couple of things. We're doing the uh, food bank again for the MCC church for their food pantry. So, and Martha's already got boxes back there for you can bring food from now until probably the middle of December. And uh, <clears throat> we'll take it down then. Also, we're collecting socks for the homeless children and also special socks that have the little grippers on it for the um, people at Pam's uh, organization where she works. So, um, they have to have the grippers on them, but um, we couldn't do the poinsettias this year because of. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, because of the virus. So anyhow, we're going to do the socks. They, they said we could do that. So um, we will be uh, collecting those through the probably the middle of December also. Uh, so uh, back to the uh, well. Next Sunday also is uh, the Sunday before Thanksgiving. We usually uh, have an ecumenical service at one of the churches. That is not happening, uh, and uh, we will be having communion. And we figure out a way to do that so that nobody has to touch their. Um, bread and everything, so we figured out, thanks to him, we figured out a way to do that, so uh, and how we'll be doing that next Sunday, and we'll be doing it at Christmas also, as we usually do. So, um, speaking for the repairs of the church, of course, the, the heat's been fixed, thank goodness, and uh, it's working really well. Um, for me to say it's warm in here, <laughs> you know it's working well, so, anyhow, but the next thing is we, uh, we're going to get a couple estimates on the roof. We had hail damage, and the insurance company uh, is it Doug has talked to them and uh, supposedly we'll be paying for that except for the thousand dollar deductible that we have. So that being said, we've had a couple of people that have uh, said that they will match the money that we donate. So if you donate ten dollars, they'll donate ten dollars. 
we're going to run this through probably the end of January because I know holidays are coming up and, and we'll see how things go and we might extend it a little bit. So this is, will be a, a good fundraiser for us because, you know, if you can give even a dollar, then that makes it a $2 donation. So it will be something that uh, will help with the uh, repairs on the church. And so uh, we're grateful for everything that everybody does, whether you uh, give a dollar or you give your time, because time is very important with all the things that have to be done around here. So I uh, greatly appreciate them. all of that. So uh, Marita, one, number one, Marita's having her surgery on Thursday. Do not know what time yet. Uh, she, I, she probably won't know until Wednesday, but anyhow, uh, she's in, in quarantine right now. So if she's watching, hi, Marita. So <laughs> she, there was a little mistake, and she got she quarantined last week, and she didn't have to. So no. she, <laughs> they told her wrong. So she wasn't very uh, enthused about that. But anyhow, uh, she's in quarantine now, but I know her surgery will go well, and we'll be checking on her and keep everybody updated and whatever she needs. We'll try our best to take care of it. So... Um, German class on Tuesday night. Uh, the reading class is going on, even though Marie just will not be here. And um, so I think I thought. Of, oh, she wanted me to announce. She sent me an email, and she said uh, that some of you all might want to do this. Uh, they will have a free COVID COVID testing at the Bergen Center, November the 17th, which is Tuesday from three to five. If anybody's interested in doing that, I have the number where you can register. They say they recommend that you register, but she wanted me to pass that on because some people have asked how do you get one or whatever. So anyhow, I do have this information if anybody's interested in getting a, a test. So does anybody else have anything they want to say or do or whatever? I do want to meet with the board after, after before they leave because uh, I know people like to have coffee and stuff, so I, I do need to meet with the board for a few minutes. So. I did want to say if you're donating food for the food bank, mm -hmm. that many of the people who come there are homeless. And so if you can think of something that doesn't have to be cooked, for example, tuna, peanut butter, those kind of things that are ready to eat, okay. it's a good idea to make sure you throw some of that in with your donation. Oh, okay. That's good to know because I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else? All right. Turn it back over to you, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Isn't it a blessing that we have enough to give to others? Yeah, I think it's great to say to yourself all the time, there is enough and I have enough. Uh, it's great uh, to share with some people who would um, benefit from our giving. Um, let's have a benediction now to pray for um, our world before we head out. And then I'll give you a few seconds of silence after our prayer, if you would, to say a prayer for our country right now and our transition in that uh, we're experiencing. Most gracious God, I know that you are within me. And because of that, because of who you are, I am powerful and strong. I am loving and kind. I am the light of the world. I love your people. I thank you that we are individualized expression of you and your spirit. Help me to remember who I am throughout this week. Help me to see also in my neighbor who they are because of you. Help me be loving and kind. Thank you for your strength. Now let us have a moment to pray quietly for our country. That all will see what is good. And each remembers who they are.
where we live. May we as Americans make good choices that are kind and considerate of each other. Thank you for your blessing.